Hi, my name is Cindy Porter and I'm a video creator for Colour Art. Today I'm going to show you start to finish my techniques for creating this piece. So grab a cuppa and come join me for this painting demonstration. I began with an 8 by 8 inch pre-primed canvas and some vivid ultra-metallic African jade paint. I paint the entire canvas with African jade using a crisscross motion. Using this uh, motion creates texture to my base layer. Painting the entire canvas in one colour like this creates continuity of tone and colour throughout my whole piece. Here I'm grabbing some teal zircon when I realised I had forgotten to paint the edges of my canvas. Um, so I go back to the African jade to finish those off. I always like to paint my edges. Next I'm using the teal zircon and I'm using that to roughly map out my design for my canvas. Here I'm trying to decide roughly where everything is going to go and what the piece is going to look like. I suppose it's the same as doing your initial sketch. I'm just doing it with my base layer of paint. I'm mixing a little African Jade and Teal Zircon and even a little bit of water to map out my top section of the canvas. My top section is going to be slightly lighter than the bottom portion. Next I'm grabbing some Siam White enamel paint and I'm grabbing my palette knife. I'm going to be using my palette knife to apply the Siam White. For this method of painting you need to apply a very thin layer of paint to the back of the palette knife and hold it flat against the canvas with very light pressure and drag the palette knife along the canvas. I really do get myself tied up in knots sometimes when I paint. Look at this crisscrossing over just to get at the paint with the palette knife. Again, I'm making sure that I only have a very small amount on the back of that palette knife each time I touch it to the canvas. If you have too much paint on, you're just going to end up with a big blob instead of creating lovely textural effects. So that small amount of paint is vital. The 
and continue to add the white in the same manner making sure that I don't get too much paint on that knife every time and if I do load too much paint on you'll notice there that I just tap it off onto the palette so that I don't end up with any big blobs on my canvas you really do create fabulous texture by using this method for applying the paint next up I grab some Bolivian blue one of my favorite colors in the vivid range and I'm again going to use the same technique with the back of the palette knife to apply the paint to the canvas with this stronger color you can see the fabulous textural effects you get by applying your paint in this manner the darker colour lets you see so much better on the video than the white does. I'll continue to apply this and build up the layers of paint and texture. And you'll see that I remember to keep my sides painted in the same fashion that the front of my canvas is I like to have my paintings wrapped right around the edges of my canvas that's my personal choice I know some artists don't and they just paint their edges and some leave them raw I personally like the look of the the piece fully wrapping around your canvas. Here I have moved to using the very thin edge of the palette knife. I'm running it through the paint and then across the canvas to give me very thin lines of paint. You can only achieve this by using a metal palette knife the plastic palette knives are way too thick to get such a thin line from the edge um, as you just saw me do there I've moved back to the teal zircon paint and I'm applying it and spreading it in the same manner with the palette knife flat to the canvas and gently dragging it across now I've grabbed some sunburst this is the color that I've chosen to create my highlight with and I'm roughly mapping out my highlight area with some watered down sunburst I'm now grabbing some gesso and I am going to mix the gesso with a small amount of the sunburst to create an opaque paler version of the color to create the base for my highlight in the sky the lighter colors of the vivid paints um, are semi transparent so by adding a little bit of gesso in this manner 
I not only create a tint of the colour but I also create an opaque version of it. I decide I need a little more gesso because I want to put a gesso layer into my sky area to start giving it some depth for my clouded sky. I'm also adding some gesso to my water area again to give it that extra depth Getting great depth in your acrylic paintings is all about the layering of paint. To a novice it might seem strange that I continually paint over areas with different colours and go back to the colours that I used originally but these layers all make a big difference to the look and feel of your finished piece. Here I'm wiping off some of the excess gesso that I just applied to give it a washed, soft, mottled appearance over the canvas. I often use this technique either with white for a light piece like this or with a black or very dark colour for a deeper piece. I've gone back to the teal zircon. I've gone back to the teal zircon and African jade and I'm adding more with the palette knife to the edges both top and bottom of the canvas piece. Excuse my cat coming to say hello. I've grabbed the Bolivian blue again with the palette knife and I am adding more of that, another layer over that corner. Here I've grabbed the China black enamel and I'm going to add even more depth to this corner again using the palette knife in the same way applying a very small amount to the face of the palette knife and dragging it gently over the canvas I'm now using a mix of both the China Black and Bolivian Blue on this corner with the palette knife. Can you see the depth that's starting, depth and texture that's starting to form on the canvas now from these layers? Once again pondering my next move on the canvas and cleaning off my palette knife. You must remember to keep them clean of any paint build up otherwise you won't get the nice results that you're seeing here. I add a little extra teal zircon and African jade to the palette, mix the two together and start applying it to the top portion of the canvas. The area I'm working on now will form my trees, abstract trees as they will be, in my finished piece. I continue working on the tree area of my piece and you'll see that I'm using the side of the palette knife at times to create 
grooves and marks into the wet paint. This just gives me even more texture on the piece. Still using a mix of African Jade and Teal Zircon and applying it with a flat palette knife. Now I'm grabbing some gesso with a much smaller palette knife and I am adding that to the central highlighted area. You'll notice that I tend to be applying it in a tapping motion. I'm trying to create that appearance of fluffy clouds in the sky. I did say trying to achieve that look. And as everybody knows, not everything goes the way we want. And these clouds were just not coming out at all like I wanted. To the point where I decided to grab a dry brush and feather out that gesso that I had applied because I just didn't like what was happening. So I feather it out across the top and contemplate my next move. So I decide to go back to the African Jade with a little bit of gesso and do some washes over the water portion of the canvas. You'll see I'm a very slow painter. I literally stop and contemplate every few brush strokes often when I'm painting. Doesn't make for very exciting video watching. Applying another coat of gesso to the watered area and also to that sky highlight area. Like I said earlier, getting results in acrylic paintings to get depth is all about the many, many layers of paint we apply. Here I've gone back to the Sunburst Vivid and I am applying another layer of highlight around the edges of what I perceive to be the tree line in my abstract. I'm adding back in a little African Jade to my sky area, to the cloud area. just trying to achieve different tones and depths to make it look more like a clouded sky. You'll notice that I'm watering some of the paint down to give it a much thinner wash. Next I decide to water down a very small amount of the China Black and apply it to one side of my sky and then use my brush to feather it out.
feathering like that is done by using your brush very very softly against the canvas and just letting the bristles gently touch the surface of the canvas. Now I've gone back to gesso on my water area and you'll notice that I'm applying it in horizontal lines using the fine edge of my flat brush. I'm not applying a solid coat, I'm just applying lines to give more depth and feel to my watered area. I'm repeating the same technique here but this time using African Jade in the water area. Applying some more gesso into that sky. Still trying to achieve that elusive cloud appearance. Some more African Jade. just building up those layers of colour. Now I've grabbed my big flat palette knife and some teal zircon and I'm again using the dragging technique I continue to use this technique to apply more and more paint to this area more layers creating more and more texture on the canvas I start to use the fine edge of the palette knife to create lines both with paint and just marks into the wet paint on the canvas. Creating those lines both horizontally and vertically I switch to my finer palette knife to create some more lines with the teal zircon paint. This is a very easy way to create extremely thin lines on your painting. A lot of people when they first start to paint have trouble using liner brushes to create thin lines. This is one easy way to shortcut that. Adding some of the teal zircon in the opposite corner both with the flat face of the palette knife dragging 
and the edge to create some line work. I'm sorry that I'm going off the screen just a little there. Out of view. Some more African Jade on the flat face of the palette knife, gently dragging it across the canvas. Slowly, slowly building up the layers. One thing that I was told when I was first starting to really paint all the time by um, an artist friend of mine was that the biggest mistake people make when um, learning to paint and starting to paint is that they don't put enough paint on the canvas. It really is important to make sure you have plenty of paint on your canvas and it might look like I am continually repeating myself over and over in a way I guess I am but this all adds to the piece looking as good as it does in the end look at that shine of that vivid cord in the lights there on that angle as I'm doing the edge of the canvas it's glorious the vivid ultra metallics are amazing paints to work with and as you can see, see that gorgeous sheen is unbeatable back to the teal zircon for yet another layer and again using the edge of the palette knife to create those lines on the canvas I have to apologize for continually going off screen here out of view I when I'm painting I tend to get lost in what I'm doing and I forget that I'm videotaping and I get that I need to stay in shot and on screen so I'm sorry for that all I'm doing is the same thing over and over at the moment which is creating lines with the teal zircon paint and the thin edge of my palette knife both horizontal and vertical lines contemplating the next step like I said I often do and we're going to leave it there for today otherwise this video will be way too long please come back for the next installment soon thank you very much for spending your time with me I hope you enjoyed it and you can find details of the products below thank you